Welcome to the Honeywell TC500 technical training. By the end of this course, you'll know how to install, set up, and configure the TC500 thermostat. These topics will be covered. Installation. Setup wizard. Basic and advanced configuration. The TC500 thermostat is designed for commercial buildings, rooftops with conventional or heat pump equipment. It controls staged or modulating equipment, communicates over Wi-Fi and BACnet IP, can be configured on screen or with a mobile app, and users can control one or many thermostats from their smartphone. To get started, remove the back plate from the thermostat by loosening the captive security screw and pulling on the paper tail. Attach the thermostat to the wall with the supplied screws and wall anchors if you need them. If you are replacing the thermostat and need to cover marks on the wall, order the cosmetic deco plate. I will wire the R and C to power the thermostat, and skip the W, Y, and G and other terminals that you will use. Use solid thermostat wire and strip the insulation using the guide on the back plate. Insert the wires into the terminals, no tools needed. If you need to remove wires, push the included tool into the little holes near each terminal to release the wire. If you like, you can also use this tool to make it easier to push the wire into the terminal. When the TC500 is powered, you'll see a welcome screen for a minute or two while it loads software. Then it will run a wizard to guide you through the initial setup. You can start the wizard by touching Let's Begin. First, select a language. I'll use the display on the thermostat to set it up, so I'll choose Thermostat. Next, enter a name for this thermostat. This can be letters and numbers, upper and lower case, up to 30 characters. When you're done, press Next and confirm that you have it set the way you want it. Then choose Fahrenheit or Celsius. The TC500 updates its clock over a secure internet connection. In order to display local time, enter the difference in hours for your location from Universal Time, UTC. For instance, if you're on the East Coast, enter minus five. West Coast, enter minus eight. Here in the central time zone, I'll enter minus six. Enter the date here, and enter the time here. The thermostat will get time updates over the air in the future, but to start, we need to enter the time. And if you want to display the time in 24 hour format, touch the 24 down here. When you're all done, touch next. Now select conventional or heat pump. Then the cooling stages, let's go with two stages. You can configure it for modulating heat or staged heat. If you choose modulating, it will output an analog signal on one of the universal I.O. terminals. I will choose two stages of regular heat. Select automatic if you want the thermostat to automatically select heating or cooling, or manual if you want the users to switch from heating to cooling using the system switch on the thermostat. Next, enter the set points for occupied and unoccupied. Remember to do cooling as well as heating. Scroll down for the cooling set point. You can also program a standby set point. It's not necessary, but you can use it to keep the building at a temperature in between occupied and unoccupied, to keep the building slightly conditioned while waiting for the next occupied period. And all these set points can be changed later on by going to the config menu or the building manager could use the Honeywell Connect Me app as well. Press Next when you're done and enter a password for the installer user. Press the I on the right so you can check for typos. It can be letters, numbers, or symbols between four and 12 characters. 
And before you move on, make a note of your password so you can get back in later. Now type in your company name, phone number, and email address so your customers can easily contact you if they need to. Be sure not to enter your personal contact info as customers will be able to see this. Press yes and the thermostat will look for a Wi-Fi signal. Then choose the wireless access point to connect to. I will connect to the guest network here at the office. This network does not require a password, but I trust that the one you're connecting to does. Type in the Wi-Fi password here. And just like the installer password, if you touch the I, then you can see what you're typing. Then the thermostat will connect. Press Done, and it will display the home screen like this. The Setup Wizard configures the initial settings. To set up the rest, swipe to the left from the home screen. Before we go to the configuration menu, let's take a look at this page. In the upper left is the name that we made for this thermostat in the Setup Wizard. Right below that is the screen brightness. Touch that, then drag to set the brightness. Then touch the arrow to go back. Touch the F to change to Celsius. Touch it again if you want to go back to Fahrenheit. If there are any active alarms, you will see a bell icon on the home screen. Go here and touch the alert button to see details about each alarm and acknowledge them. When you went through the setup wizard, you entered your company name, phone, and email. Here it is so customers can call you if they need service. If the thermostat is in the unoccupied mode, here, I'll go back to the home screen. You can see how it's in the unoccupied period. You can make a temporary override by touching here. Now the thermostat will run at the occupied set point for three hours. That's the default. In the advanced config menu under miscellaneous, you can set how long. This is a good time to mention that the screen you're looking at will be a bit different from the one I'm using. That's because the TC500 can be updated over Wi-Fi. As we talk with you and improve the thermostat, we'll send out firmware changes to make the TC500 better and better. Here's where you can enter the schedule. You can set weekly schedules, holidays, and special events. I'll start with setting up the weekly schedule, so I'll press weekly. Here's the schedule for Monday. There is a preset occupied period but you could change it to whatever makes sense for the building. We could add another occupied or standby period anytime during the day. Anytime that is not set as occupied or standby will be treated as unoccupied. I'm happy with just one occupied period, so I'll copy that to the rest of the work week. And you can do the same thing for Saturdays or Sunday and add a new event, occupied or standby. That's the weekly schedule. Next, you could put in some holidays. For a holiday, you need to enter the date, either a floating date, like one that falls on the third Thursday of a certain month, or one that lands on a certain date every year. Holidays are set as unoccupied by default. If you do need an occupied period, you can add that or a standby period. You can store up to 20 holidays. A special event can be entered too. This is a one-time event that occurs on a certain date. Special events can be set up to last for more than one day, and just like a holiday, they default to unoccupied and can be set to occupied or standby for part of the day. That's scheduling. Now we'll go to the config menu. Here is the config menu. I'll start with the basic menu. Under basic, there are two categories, general and equipment. Under general, you can edit things you entered in the startup wizard, like the name of the thermostat, and contractor information. One important thing to do here is to turn on daylight savings time if that's active in your area. If the dates for daylight savings time are not correct, you can edit those here. Here is equipment. You can choose the type of equipment in the setup wizard, but you can change it here, heat pump to conventional. And you can configure things a bit more. For instance, under standby action, you can treat standby as occupied or unoccupied. 
You might select this if you want the fan to run continuously and open the outdoor air damper when the standby temperature set points are used. For instance, if you want a pre-occupancy purge period, you could program a standby period one hour before the occupied period each day. If you set standby as occupied, then the fan will come on and pre-purge the building. I'll come back to advanced in a moment. Connection is where you go if you need to connect to a different wireless access point or when a building manager or other user wants to link this thermostat to their smartphone using the Connect Me mobile app. Turn on Bluetooth here and on their smartphone. Then scan this QR code and follow instructions on the smartphone. User management helps you set up users. The TC500 supports up to four kinds of users, visitor, basic, advanced, and installer. You can choose which ones to use, and each one comes with default privileges that you can change. Set these up with a building owner or facility manager so security is set the way they want it. The visitor can view but not change the set point, humidity, and mode. No password is needed for visitor access. You can set one of two home screens for visitor. One does allow them to adjust the set point and temporarily override an unoccupied period. The basic user has access to read and control things like system mode and alert. If you enable basic or advanced users, it will prompt you to add a password. You can choose the normal home screen or a simplified home screen that simply has up and down arrows and an override button. This type of user role is applicable for users like store clerks or receptionists. The advanced user has access to read and set overrides change schedules, or modify the basic configuration. This type of user role is applicable for store managers or business owners. The installer user has rights to change everything. Through this role, the user can control all elements of the thermostat. If you do not create basic or advanced users, then the thermostat will not require a password for any operation. It will give installer privileges to anyone using the thermostat. That's why I have this one set up. That's user management. Now let's look at alarms. The TC500 can be configured to alarm when certain things occur or when a sensor stops functioning correctly. A bell icon will display on the screen. Then users can view and respond to the alarm. If you wanted to create an airflow alarm, you would start by configuring one of the universal I.O. terminals as proof of airflow then wire a differential pressure switch to that I.O. terminal. And you could set this so that it turns off heating and cooling if the lower stops working. System status lets you see the current state of things. Touch basic information for the current indoor temp, set point, system mode, and set points. Keep scrolling down for more information. Go to Configurable I.O. to see the status of the inputs and output terminals. Device information tells you the part number and serial number and more. Network status tells you about the network connection. Under Display Management, you can choose what to show or hide from the home screen to customize it the way you want it. And lastly, if you want to reset the schedule to do it all over again, you can do that here. And if you want to reset everything so the TC500 is in new, out-of-the-box condition, select Reset All. Now let's look at the advanced configuration menus. Equipment is at the top of the list. Let's start there. In basic configuration, I set this thermostat up for conventional heat. And if I go to cooling and heating, you'll see the settings for minimum on and off times, 
blackout temperatures, and cycles per hour. If I had configured it for heat pump, heat pump would be listed here with settings for compressor and ox heat lockouts, and etc. The fan settings are done here. Mode defaults to run the fan continuously during the occupied period. Speed type allows you to set for two speeds or to send an analog signal to control the fan with six speeds. If you set it up for two speed fan, you'll need to configure one of the outputs for first stage fan, and the G terminal would be the high speed fan. If you set up the thermostat for variable speed, you can configure how fast each speed is and assign each speed to a function. To set up the thermostat for variable speed fan control, you will also need to go to configurable I.O. and set up the UI01 for fan speed control. And then use the UI01 terminal for the analog speed signal going to your VFD. And the fan start stop signal can be wired to the G terminal. I'll show you those configurable I.O. settings in just a moment. And down below are more configurations such as humidification and dehumidification. And down at the bottom, you can set up the thermostat to work with an economizer. Here's configurable I.O. It's where you can configure what terminals are linked to which functions. Some of the outputs are fixed. In the setup wizard, I configured this thermostat for two-stage cooling. So it shows digital outputs 5 and 6 are used for first and second stage cooling. But Y3, digital output 7, is available. So we could use that to activate an economizer, first stage fan, or turn on a humidifier if we had set one of those up under equipment. And going back to the universal I.O. at the top of the list, I'll set UIO1 for a fan speed control and connect that terminal to the analog input on a VFD. I'll set UIO2 for that proof of airflow switch we talked about earlier. This function works with a dry contact pressure switch that is normally open or normally closed. Once you've defined which terminals your analog or digital sensors are wired to in configurable I.O., you can configure them here. This is also the place where you can define the address for silk devices. Perhaps a TR40 wall module for remote temperature sensing. Under additional sensors is the proof of airflow sensor we set up a moment ago. If you configured a remote temperature sensor, you can set the TC500 to use that instead of the internal space temperature sensor here. Valid remote temperature sensors are 10K or 20K sensors wired to the UI or UIO terminals, or a TR40 series silk wall module configured to address 2 or a TR120 configured to address 6. Multi-sensors allows you to average multiple sensors. It will use the local sensor and silk sensors at addresses 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. In setpoint options, you can set stops on how high or low heating or cooling setpoints can go. Dead band between heating and cooling for auto changeover and limit temperature set points to keep buildings comfortable, but not waste energy. That's set point options. Now let's look at miscellaneous. If you have a number of TC500s in the building and the power is interrupted, the power up delay can be set differently on each thermostat to keep them from calling for equipment at the same time. Here you can set how long the unoccupied override time is. I'll leave it at three hours. You can also set the demand response temperature offset here. This is triggered by a backnet command. And you can enable smoke mode here. If you want the HVC system to shut down in smoke mode, be sure to set up an input for shutdown. Service mode is for troubleshooting. You can easily switch on and off the fan, heating, and cooling. But be careful, there is no compressor protection delay when you do this. This concludes Honeywell's TC500 technical training. For more information, contact your Honeywell sales representative or visit buildings.honeywell.com.